Good day, poker peeps. This is Sky with Smart Poker Study, coming at you with a hand reading demonstration. So we need two things to hand read. Number one is a hand, right? So we've got a hand, pocket jacks on the button within the Poker Tracker 4 hand replayer right here. And the second thing we need is Flopzilla Pro. This is the best software for hand reading. It works perfectly. It does everything that you want to do to assign your opponent a preflop range and then narrow that range through the streets. And I'm gonna demonstrate that right now. So when you're doing hand reading, you generally do this work off the felt, at least to build an understanding, build an intuition for it. And then you can use these kind of strategies, visualizing your opponent's ranges, narrowing them through the streets in game. Once you do a lot of this work off the felt here, like we're doing today in this little study session. So let's take a look at the hand and then we'll go through the hand reading process. A couple of folds. Villain six decides to open raise. We decide to call and then the blinds fold. So we're gonna be heads up. This is our main villain. So like I said originally, uh, hand reading starts with assigning a pre-flop range of hands. So we have to figure out what is our opponent making this open raise with. Well, let's look at some information right here. First off, this player, 35 slash three, very loose passive player comes in 35% of the time, but only raises 3%, right? So most of the time, this player is limping and calling. This is a rare raise. So it probably means a very strong range of hands. He also made it five big blinds to start. And then so we got to ask ourselves, what's he doing this with? I think five big blinds feels like it's kind of like a scared hand like he likes his hand but he just would prefer to just taking it down right now hands like nines tens and jacks definitely fit the bill for making that kind of play if he can make this with nines tens and jacks he could probably do it with queens kings and aces as well try to maximize the value with the best pre-flop starting hands I think he also has ace king in his range for making this play right here. Um, he's happy if everybody folds, but if somebody calls and he hits that ace or the king, it's go for value time from his perspective, I believe. So I think those are in his range. I think ace queen is in his range as well. I think players can do this with ace jack suited, but at ace 10 suited, that's when that gap becomes too big. That's a three gapper, king queen uh, jack, or I'm sorry, a two gapper, king and queen in the middle he's probably gonna limp in with this hand instead. He might be able to do this with king queen suited, but I think everything else outside of this range is either folding or just limping in, trying to see that flop very cheaply. So the way we've done it, we're giving him a 5.7% range that consists of 76 combos, as you can see up here. And generally he raises first in 5% of the time. Let's take a look at something real quick. This player limps in, whoa, 41% of the time. In the cutoff, he raises 8%. Now, that's only one out of 12 instances, kind of a small sample size. So I'm pretty comfortable here with my 5.7% uh, uh, range I assigned to him. What you always have to do for hand reading is always enter in your hand because it's critical to develop the intuition for what your hand's equity is against their entire range. So if we put the jack of clubs, jack of diamonds, hey, we're winning right now. Preflop, if no more money goes in on the millions of random flops, turns, and rivers, we're going to win almost 51% of the time right here. So I like my spot in position, equity advantage. Flop comes king, 9-3. So on this flop, you can see he has a lot of kings in his range. Ace, king, pocket kings, king, queen. He had plenty of top pair hands. He has a set of nines potentially in his range as well. He also has pocket eights or pocket aces, I mean to say. So because he has so many decently strong hands on this flop, our equity dropped from 51 to about 37.6% right here. Not the best board in the world, right? But here's something, I love using the smart HUD. I'm, I'm always referencing it as I play, always looking at my opponent's post-flop stats to help me gauge how they're going to play post-flop. Now, he c-bets 100% of the time on the flop, three out of three. But that's totally expected, right? He hardly ever raises. It's a very strong range when he raises. Of course he's gonna see bet. Even if he misses with like ace jack uh, and pocket tens right here, he's gonna see bet at least once, like be a one and done player to try to take it down. And then if he hits his set of kings, set of nines, ace king, he's gonna see bet to get value from us. So we're expecting a see bet 100% of the time. But look at this on the turn so far, 
It's 0% double barreling. Now, it's only 0 out of 1, but that could be an indication that he's a turn honest player. So we expect the flop C bet, but if he checks to us on the turn, we can uh, infer a lot of information from that, and we'll be doing that in this hand. So let's see what happens. He bets half pot exactly. We decide to call. So we've got to ask ourselves, remember what I said, uh, the second part of hand reading is narrowing their range. We do that by removing the hand strengths that do not fit their play. So let's hit this little reset all filters button. All the filters disappear here. Now these are all the different hand strengths, right? What hand strengths do we think this loose passive villain is C betting half pot? Well, I think he could do it with his sets, kings and nines. He could do it with his over pairs, aces. His top pair hands, totally, those are all C betting here. Pocket pair less than top card, like I said earlier, he wants to end the hand. Now he hates the king. He hopes that we don't have it, so he's going to bet to get us our fold, our ace high, our pocket eights, whatever we might have. He just wants to end the hand. And I think he could do it with no made hand as well, which is only ace queen and ace jack, right? I think he could do it with all of these. So I'm actually going to give him 100% range. Every one of his hands right now is C betting this flop. Now against the 100% range, we've got that 37.6% equity still. Let's see what happens on the turn. The nine of clubs hit. So on the nine of clubs, our equity jumps up a little bit to 41%. Oh, interesting. He checks. Now that check is probably a really good sign of weakness. We love seeing that check. It's going to allow us to potentially get to showdown much cheaper. And hopefully our pocket jacks are going to win out against this player. So we got to ask ourselves, what is he checking on this turn, nine of clubs? I think quads and full houses, I really think those need to bet. Even if he bets just eight big blinds, or even maybe the same, five and a half big blinds like he bet before, he's got to build that pot now with the goal of getting his entire stack in. By checking and slow playing such strong hands, he's totally missing a value opportunity, especially given that we called on a king high. We could easily have ace, king, king, queen, king, jack right now. So from his perspective, we have a king potentially, or we have a couple of hearts for a heart draw, a flush draw. He's got to bet because we're probably going to call. That nine isn't going to scare us off the pot right here. But his check is weakness, so I am not going to include those in the range. Is he going to check with aces? Does anybody check with aces here? No, they don't. They're still kind of scared that a, a third heart is going to hit. They don't want us to hit a queen, a jack, a 10 to complete a straight, right? Those are all going to be betting. Top pairs, ace, king, king, queen. This player, I'm pretty sure, will double barrel with those hands right here. Now, pocket pair less than top card. I think those are scared and want to get to showdown. No made hand, scared and just hope to hit a pair on the river. Those are making this check. So now that we've narrowed his range, by removing the strongest hands, keeping the weakest checking hands, Eric Wady jumps back up, way up to 70%. Loving this right now. Uh, oh, and we check behind, obviously. The river comes the four of hearts. So what does he do? He checks again. Awesome. What is he checking with? Let's remove all the, uh, reset all the filters. Is he checking his flushes right now? No way. He doesn't want us to check behind. He wants to bet something to get value. Is he checking his pocket pair less than top card? Totally. Wants to get showdown cheap. Is he checking his ace highs? Totally. Doesn't want to bluff. We could see this player only bets river 13%, folds 80%. Super river honest player. He's checking those ace highs right here. So he checked. Now we could bet to try to get value, but we got to ask ourselves, what is potentially giving us value here? Really? Six combos of pocket tens are giving us value. We're chopping with jacks. The ace queen, the ace jack, those are all folding. Like we're not getting any value. We're just ending the hand right here. And then pocket queens are actually beating us right now. So half of his range. Um, if we think about just the hands that would potentially call, let's get rid of the ace highs. Just those pocket pair hands right here. Well, almost half of his range are just going to be calling us. Half of those beat us. The other half doesn't beat us, and we chop. I think checking, like you can see right now, now that we narrowed his range, we have 50% equity. I see no reason to bet. We check behind, and he ends up showing ace-queen offsuit, which is a hand that we originally put in his checking range. So it's a successful hand reading exercise, and a successful hand. We actually ended up winning the hand, won a few chips off of this uh, very narrow preflop open raisers range. 
Alrighty, so today's video was brought to you by, by my brand new online poker hand reading workbook. This puppy's 87 pages full of critical strategies to get you looking at all the information available for successful hand reading off the felt in your study time. And this is going to translate to actually using these strategies in game for better reads and better decisions. This is poker's number one skill, hand reading. If you have not learned it yet, if you enjoyed what you saw in the video in the demonstration I just ran through, you really do need to learn this skill. It is the number one skill for you. If you go to this page, go.smartpokerstudy.com slash hand reading workbook, there's a link you can click on in the description as well. It's going to tell you everything that you get with the workbook, and I guarantee this is what you need to turn yourself or to finally learn hand reading and to turn yourself into a hand reading master. All right, so once again, go to smart.com go.smartpokerstudy.com slash hand reading workbook to pick this up today. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.